Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Downs with Azure Governments Engineering Organization, and I'm here today joined by Jose Patton from Citrix. Uh, Jose, could you give us a quick introduction about yourself? How you doing? Uh, I'm Jose Patton. I'm the SE Director for the U.S. Public Sector. I help our DOD civilian and state local government customers with secure digital workspaces. Great. Can you actually, uh, before we get into the secure digital workspaces, can you tell us a little bit about Citrix? Yeah, so Citrix as a company provides the world's best integrated service for the secure delivery of apps and desktops. So if we look at what that really means, what a secure digital workspace is, it's defined by a few different components. So the first piece to that is a software-defined network. So if we look at what a software-defined network is, we want users to have a great experience in any location, wherever they are, in different branch offices or different locations throughout the world or the country. And it's important that we focus on that and make sure users have a great experience with that. So we have some specific software-defined technologies that will help people optimize and have a great user experience uh, wherever they happen to be. The, The next component of a secure digital workspace is enterprise mobility. So we add value to an Intune implementation and allow people to have a secure micro VPN app tunnel from any mobile device back into corporate infrastructure or agency infrastructure. So it's a great partnership that we have with Microsoft to be able to give users a great mobile experience and and do that in a secure manner. And then if we look at file sharing, data is critical to users wherever they happen to be. And we want to make sure that they could get access to that securely. So we add value to a OneDrive for Business implementation as well. So we can allow you to unlock that data, get access to it from, from wherever people may be, and uh, do that, again, in a secure manner. And then if you look at all the, the places that Citrix plays, because we are from the endpoint all the way back into the data center, we have a lot of data that we can keep track of and a lot of metrics and analytics that we can do with that data. So we can give agencies a great view into what's, at, what's happening, where the users are connecting from, specific security policies that may be in place, and, and what to do if something doesn't go right or if there's something that maybe isn't as expected to, to take some actions automatically based on the data that we're being able to pull from those connections. And then when, when we think about from an uh, uh, infrastructure perspective, we want to make this multi-cloud. So we can help manage this infrastructure in different clouds, wherever that may be, on-premises, in Azure, wherever you'd like to use a workload. We want to make that easy to, to enable any cloud to do this. And then lastly, uh, you know, the ability to get access to your desktops and your apps is critical when we talk about a, a whole secure digital workspace. And we'll get in a little bit more detail in the sure. apps and desktops component today. Okay, so you've defined the secure digital workspace, but why is that important to our federal government customers and how can they benefit from it? So if we look at you know, really some of the important characteristics of a secure digital workspace, uh, the, the first one is unified. So when users get access to a secure digital workspace, you want that to be uh, as easy as possible. So any device they get access to, they're able to get on, have a very similar user experience, get access to their applications and desktops or or websites or cloud services or whatever that may be, but make it easy for the user so it's not different access scenarios based on devices or based on location or based on you know, the, the, what, what may happen with an application-specific cloud service. So we want to make, make it easy, make it unified, and that's a key characteristic of a secure digital workspace. And then when we look at um, a, a, another characteristic that's very important for this is contextually aware. So uh, again, because the users have a unified experience and they can get access from any device, we may not want them to ha- have access to very sensitive information if they're, say, on a shared you know, uh, cafe uh, mm-hmm. workspace. We, want, we may want to restrict access, but we want to do that dynamically. We don't want to have to give users a different way or different URL or different access method. So they could go to the same place that they get access to Right? We can sense that they are mm-hmm. in maybe something that we don't trust as much, and we can respond and give them restricted so access. Cust- so users can actually connect the same way, whether they're on-site at work or at home in that cafe, and then Citrix then determines which resources the user sees? Right. The wow. agency can determine okay. a policy and allow them to, to see various uh, resources without having to go and re- reconfigure and without having to give your users a different way to, to access uh, given those scenarios. Great. Okay. And then the third component is 
security. It's, it's really the primary component. It's really what drives most of this. It's very important that we take security into mind. So we can do this from a FIPS 140-2 level two compliant from the endpoint back to the applications and data. Uh, and we have uh, many different security configurations that you can choose what are the right way for you to secure your agency and, and data and do that in a way that's uh, easy from the user's perspective. So when the trade-off between security and access happens, you have a lot of flexibility in, in to make sure that the users have a great experience, but you're still doing that from a secure manner. So now let's cover the benefits to our government customers uh, for the secure digital workspace. Yeah. So if we look at, you know, w why would someone want to use a secure digital workspace? What is the benefit to the agency? You know, the one major benefit that we see is that there are specific federal guidelines around rolling out Windows 10. So these mandates are in place and agencies must roll out Windows 10 in a very compact timeline. Mm -hmm. So we can help with that. We have technologies that will allow you to, to quickly turn on Windows 10 to various different devices and, and different endpoints and do that in a very rapid fashion. And uh, we'll get into some of the partnerships we have with Azure Gov to, to help our customers leverage Azure Gov infrastructure to do that as well. Okay. And uh, you know, a second use case that's really important is uh, cloud sprawl and being able to get access to multiple different cloud services. So Office 365 is a great example of a cloud service that there, there may be some specific federal government or state and local government uh, requirements that make sure that you restrict the way that these cloud services are accessed. So you, may, you might have to go through an agency uh, network, through an agency trusted internet connection back into a cloud service. Right. So it may be policy for that agency that that is the way that users must connect. So what we can do and help them is through a Netscaler, we can put that in front of the various cloud services and give the, the security policies and put those security policies in place for Office 365 to allow people to get access in, into that. Uh, and we have some uh, DoD customers that are doing that today. And if there are any other cloud services that you want users to access, again, with that single point of, of uh, security and connection, we can allow you to configure other cloud services to get access to. So it makes it really easy from a user perspective, and it makes it easier from a, a management and uh, perspective to apply those. So just so I'm clear, you can actually, you could have a single pane of glass for users to log in. They'll have their Office 365 applications, potentially, and any other applications that they may have published through Citrix, whether they're in the cloud or on-prem. Yep. Okay. A third um, way that there's really a benefit for our agencies to use a secure digital workspace is around hybrid cloud. So we'll get into some of the specifics around this, but we try to make it really easy for our customers to be able to take their existing infrastructure and start leveraging infrastructure as a service in the cloud right away. So to make it easy to start using Azure and have a speed of use of migrating some workloads into cloud infrastructure as a service. So we make it we make it really easy. Mm -hmm. We make it so that uh, customers don't have to go back and re-architect a lot, and uh, you can use a hybrid cloud. Uh, again, relatively easy, and, and that's built into the design of our secure digital workspace and allows the agencies to, to rapidly use the Azure uh, consumption that they may already want to use, and again, doing it in a way that they don't have to re-architect or spend a lot of time to, to try to uh, get, get in the cloud. Great. Okay, so I think we've come to the point where you get to show us a demo of your yeah. Citrix cloud. So what we have here is a uh, unified gateway experience. So I'm going to log on and get access to everything that I need to in my secure digital workspace. So here I'll log on real quick. And this is something that, say, in this scenario, the user is coming from their home laptop. Mm -hmm. They want to do some work real quick. And I, we can allow them to, get to do this securely. So normally, in an implementation that's in production, you probably wouldn't see this screen, but I wanted to leave this here just to give some examples. So the administrators would make this selection for the users so they wouldn't have to click anything here. Is that what you That's mean? an option, yeah. right? Exactly. Okay. And really what this can do is help us demonstrate the different ways that you can have connectivity. So right. what's important to keep in mind is here is that we have a NetScaler in place and we have and Zen Desktop on the back end of this, right? We can have some workloads that are on premises and workloads that are in, you know, that are in the cloud that are in Azure and Azure Gov. The users don't have to know anything, right? All that's mm -hmm. configured on the back end. So if I want to, in that configuration, I could give users access to a, a full VPN. Hmm. 
Hmm. So there might be some uh, reasons. Maybe it's an administrator access. Maybe there's something that you have right. to do from a network layer connection. But that same infrastructure can give a full VPN if that's what you want to do. I can also give access to just specific apps and desktops. And again, this can be configured from a management perspective so the user doesn't have to know. And what I'll show you in this scenario is clientless access. So I don't have to have anything installed on the endpoint, and I'm going to go ahead and log on, authenticate. And in now that I've authenticated, I can choose what apps and desktops I need to use. Okay. And again, from a user perspective, I don't know where these apps or desktops are coming from. I don't know where they're hosting it, and I don't need to know. Sure. I don't need to know many different connection mechanisms or methods or you know, pull out a little remote access card and figure out, you know, in this scenario, I do X, Y, Z, but in a different scenario, I do one, two, three. Here, I just log on to URL, and I have the same experience whether I'm in the agency, outside the agency, or wherever I happen to be. So here, what you'll see is the first button is web apps. So here, we can have Office 365 tied into this. And this can be done through a secure connection back into the agency, which may be the policy of some of these agencies. They want that connection not to go over the internet, to, but to go back through the agency through their trusted connections. So here, I can open up SharePoint. And again, easy breezy, there's nothing mm -hmm. for a user to do. Go ahead and click a link and get to work, wow. right? Very simple, but this can be a FIPS 140-2 level two compliant tunnel that goes back into the agency and then out into so the cloud service. So NetScaler helps enable that FIPS 140-2. Correct. Oh, that's great. Okay. And then, uh, you know, so I may need to get access to some applications or desktops to do my work. Mm -hmm. So here I have a few pinned, and these are applications that I need to do my work. Here I need to get access to Outlook. So Outlook's going to open up and I can do whatever I need to do. So on this Mac, right, that is mm -hmm. not managed by an agency, I now have full Windows version of Outlook and can do anything that I need to do to get, to, to get my job done in that regard. So here, you know, we can open up an email. So that Outlook is running in the cloud, not on your your laptop there, obviously, right? Correct, this, is, so this isn't installed on my Mac. It's just so you something. Deploy it in Azure it. government, take advantage of that high availability and redundancy, and rather than have to worry about managing the person's endpoint or worrying about what type of endpoint they might have. Correct. Okay. Now I might need to get access to a full Windows 10 desktop, right? right. So we can do that easily from uh, this interface as well. So I just go ahead and click on it, okay. right? And then here we have, again, from a client list perspective, we have our Windows 10 desktop open. Mm -hmm. I have some apps that I was working while I was in the office. Right. And I left I left them right in place where, where I left off, right? Okay. So I need to get back to work. Here I am. I'm in my apps. I'm in my Windows 10 desktop, and I can do what, whatever it is that I need to do. So again, secure from meeting security standards for the agency, but doing that easily for the user and from a unified environment that is contextually aware and understands the scenario that I'm working with uh, at this point in time. So again, very simple for the easy and very simple for the agency to do that. And the, the third area that we can get access to if we need to is that if there are on-prem uh, data repositories, right. we can choose to allow, again, contextually aware access to that data if that's something that we want to do. Right. Very simple, very easy for the user to get access to, and there's not a lot of learning or, or different uh, scenarios that, that someone would have to go through. So, you know, that, that was a quick and easy demo to show you, you know, the great user experience people can have to get access to the secure digital workspace. Great. So now that you've shown it to us, uh, let's double click down and can you go into what the Zen App and Zen Desktop service is and how Citrix and Microsoft work together to make that possible for our customers? Definitely. The first point I want to make and make sure that it's clear for everybody is that the Citrix Cloud does not refer to infrastructure as a service, right? So Citrix Cloud is really software as a service that Citrix manages, Citrix runs, does the upgrades on, and you know it happens to run in, on Azure, but it's it's not competitive and it's not you know, something that you would use in place of Azure. This is something that we manage and maintain, and the users will use that as a software, as a service. Great, okay. So let's get in and, and kind of talk about a traditional Citrix deployment, and then we'll, we'll show where you can leverage uh, Citrix Cloud for ZenApp and ZenDesktop specifically. So we have well over a million licenses of uh, concurrent users in the federal government today, right? And 
you know, we have very, you know, large implementations. People are very happy with it. It works really well. And they have practices where they understand the different components of the Citrix technology to make everything run great. And the one thing that we wanted to do for those environments is make it really easy, really easy to use Azure and Azure mm -hmm. Gov, right? So built right into the admin council that you would do to manage your traditional on-premises deployment of Zen App or Zen Desktop, there's a dropdown and you can actually choose to deploy workloads in Azure. So this allows you to take a you know, standard traditional deployment on-premises and start using your cloud right away. So you don't need to build a brand new Citrix infrastructure in Azure government to deploy desktops in Azure government. If you have a, a Zen Apps and Desktop implementation today, uh, you upgrade some of the components, you can start using Azure right away without having to go re-architect, without having wow. to go redesign or reinstall everything. So it's really easy if you just want to try out Azure government for some of your users and evaluate the best process to migrate those work users to the cloud. Right, you could Great. Get, and we wanted to make it very easy for our users yeah. to do that. So if we take a step back and look at the Zen App and Zen Desktop service, this is a, a great way, especially someone who's a new customer, let us manage the back end. Let us uh, manage and maintain and worry about upgrading the way that you configure the policies, the, the database that's involved with this, the license server, um, the web front ends to, to this, we can manage and maintain that, right? You don't have to worry about that. So what does the customer manage if you and, have Citrix Cloud under control at Citrix? Right, so when we, when we manage and maintain the Citrix Cloud and the upgrade structure around that, what we can allow the users to choose is to where to put that workload. Right. So they can use that on premises. There might be some reasons and there might be some uh, business decisions that you want to use infrastructure that's inside an agency. Right. Or you don't want to move all of your desktops at once to Azure government. You can do that in cycles, right? Correct, right. So if there's a reason to use on-premises, you can use on-premises so from the Citrix Cloud service to on-premises. If you want to use Azure or Azure Gov, you can use Azure and Azure Gov, right? Mm -hmm. And you can choose to where to put those workloads. If for some reason, say there's a community cloud or if there's some type of uh, other uh, infrastructure as a service cloud that you're using, you can choose to put workloads there. So we allow the users to control and to configure where they want to put the actual heavy lifting of this, right? The, the, mm -hmm. Where the RAM and CPU is really gonna be leveraged, you can choose what's the most efficient and the best for the agency. So on this slide, it, it says something about a connector. Can you tell us about the connector and what role that plays in connecting users, or I guess desktops to Citrix Cloud? Yeah, definitely. So you know what's key here is we wanted to, again, make this easy for our agencies to leverage this. And we designed the connector so that the traffic is really flowing one way and can fit into the existing security policies and the, the security infrastructure that you have today. So it's 443 traffic from within where that infrastructure as a service is back into Citrix Cloud. That's really so how they that don't need flows. to adjust their firewall security policies, most likely because 443 outbound is already allowed. Correct. And there's no inbound traffic. Correct. Right, it's all originating from the connector. That's that's a really slick way of doing this and, and uh, plays into the security posture of our customers. Right. And also, we can help with the updating of that, too. So we can help keep that evergreen. We can help, help keep that Citrix Cloud connector uh, up to date as much as possible, right? So again, we wanted to make this flexible and easy for our users to start using infrastructure as a service wherever that may be as quickly as, as they can. Great, so uh, you know, Microsoft and Citrix have had a close relationship for over 25 years. So why don't you tell us, tell me, um, how does that relationship extend into Azure? So great news is the recent announcement around Windows 10. Yep. So Windows 10 is now can be easily leveraged in Azure and we can leverage that in conjunction with a Citrix infrastructure. Given the, the agency's licensing, you can now use a full version of Windows 10 in the cloud mm -hmm. and get access and use it however you may see fit. This is important because this is a differentiator. Most other services that are out there, a lot of that is all hosted shared desktops, yeah. which is a great solution, it works great. It's one operating system, many users on that, right? With Citrix and Microsoft together, we can give a full Windows 10 desktop and allow you to run that in Azure and Azure Gov. You've talked about the capabilities, so now let's talk about use cases. 
what are some use cases relevant to the government? Yeah, so we, we, we talked about the Windows 10. Mm -hmm. uh, Windows 10 is important and being able to quickly roll out Windows 10 uh, is, is definitely one of the first key use cases. A second common use case that we see is the contractor access. So a lot of the federal, state, and local government uh, has outsourced IT, or maybe there's certain programs and projects that are outsourced to a system integrator or a contractor to get work done. Well, when you create that program and you have the contractors that may need to uh, access agency-specific applications or data, there's a lot of decisions that have to be made. How do we do this securely? How do we able to manage this over uh, a, a life cycle? How do we deprovision? There's a lot that goes into decisions, and sometimes there's costs associated with it. Buying equipment that's specific for the contractor sometimes is a decision that's made. There's different ways that people do that. We want to make it easy for our agencies to quickly provision and deprovision access for contractors. So with the secure digital workspace that we demonstrated earlier, you can go in, give access to your contractors, allow them maybe just a, a mm -hmm. limited access to specific apps, limited access to specific data, allow that to, to, to happen during the, the life cycle of the program, and then quickly deprovision that access. So it, it, you know, it's a great use case that allows agencies to move quickly with their programs and get the value. And the real reason why they did the program is not to give contractors access to agency, is to actually accomplish a goal and, and accomplish something that's part of that program. So we can help the speed of that and help enable agencies to get uh, the value of that, that program and that contract as quickly as possible. Okay, and I see you've got on the slide a PC refresh, you know, that's a really common process for all of our federal customers and uh, SLG. They've got to, every three years usually, replace PCs. So where does Citrix help them there? Yeah, so, you know, th that's the one that we've seen a trend is that agencies have bought, you know, workstations or laptops. And originally when they were bought, they were bought with a three-year cycle. And then, you know, to reduce costs, that was extended to five or, and extended further. And now, you know, to run Windows 10, there might be some challenges or it, it may be, you know, time to where, where people are thinking about right. removing. So them. the hardware might even support Windows 10. Right. Might not, right? So what we can do is we actually have something called a transformer. And we can take mm -hmm. older hardware, run a tool against that, put essentially a very slimmed down operating system that can still be managed by, by standard system tools, right? And that will, is a jump point back into the secure digital workspace. So that can allow you to, to you know, extend the life of those laptops and desktops that are within the agency and really turn them into a utility endpoint. So if it breaks, something goes wrong, get rid of it, put another one there, and you don't have to worry because there's not any apps or data or anything that you have to manage, and you can get access back to your secure digital workspace. So with Azure government, you know, we take care of the data center hardware for you, so you don't have to worry about that sort of refresh, and you're just worried about providing the user workloads. It sounds like Transformer adds that capability to the client. So really, if, if they deploy Transformer in conjunction with Azure government, that's a quite a bit of an opportunity for our customers to leverage Windows 10. Great. So you've also got BYOD. What yeah. is that? So bring your own device that, you know, the, there's been multiple, there's been a lot of talk around the Beltway and a lot of talk around the country about bring your own device. Sometimes it can be a loaded term, mm -hmm. but really in essence, w what we think it means is allow you to use any device, right? Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to give a stipend or, or do some, some type of situation like that. You may want to, but really you can allow users to choose the device that they feel most comfortable with and deliver a secure access to the apps and data that they need to get their job done. So again, it allows a lot of flexibility from an agency to, to you know, reduce maybe the cost of the endpoints that they have to buy or to increase the flexibility of the workforce so that they can work wherever they choose. If they're going in meetings around the country, around the Beltway, wherever they happen to be, they can log on quickly from any device and have secure access to the apps and data so that they need to do their job, right? So you know that's, that's a great use case and it's something that we can quickly and easily allow agencies to get up and running uh, in, in the infrastructure that allows them, you know, again, to meet the security policies that, that they may need to make uh, in place to, to do this from a, a secure perspective. So I think uh, now you're going to show us the next demo, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one. Okay, so what, what I'm going to show you is there might be some specific workloads that are Linux specific, right? So there right. might be some engineering applications, some scientific applications that only run on Linux, and users may need to get access to that.
So right from the same unified access point that allowed me to get access to all my cloud software as a service applications, internal websites, mm -hmm. Windows applications, Windows 10 desktops, I could also get access to Linux and Linux applications. And you can have all of that running in Azure, right? All of that this can Linux run in Azure. Running in Azure. This Linux desktop is running in Azure. Huh. Here I have a Linux specific application. And the great thing too is back into the Linux OS, I can poke all the Windows applications that I may need to do to get my job. So here I have the Citrix receiver installed, right. and I have that same storefront with all the applications I need access to. And here I actually am running you know, full version of Outlook and Office right. 365. And I can do that easily right from the Linux desktop. So wait, you just clicked on, off it, on Outlook from within, from the storefront web page loaded on the Linux desktop. Correct. And now you're connected to Outlook from, from Linux. Linux. And this actually pulled in this Roam the session that I had from my Mac operating right. systems uh, or, or originally. So I typed this on a Mac, and now I'm able to, to see this within the Linux operating system. So if you have uh, developers or users that have a Linux desktop, they can get very easily back to Office 365 without having to hop over to their Windows 10 desktop, whether it's a VDI session or a physical workstation. Right, you don't have to swap back and forth, and more importantly, you don't have to know to do something different. Right. Right, so the same way that you opened up Office before, the same way you got access to Office 365 before, you get access to Office 365 in this use case as well. So we make it really simple, really easy, really flexible for people to do this in a secure manner. All right, Jose, that was a great demo running Linux on Azure government and connecting through Citrix. So now, uh, can you, it sounds like you've got some actual customer feedback or impressions to share with us. Yeah, so we could talk about who who's actually using this, right, and who, who does yeah. this. So Lucas Metropolitan Housing Authority uses Citrix Cloud for Zenops and Desktop and Azure Gov to be able to deliver a secure digital workspace. Mm. This allowed them to quickly used the infrastructure as a service, so they were able to take the CapEx cost that they were planning to spend on more hardware in a data center and leverage Azure in place using OpEx. It also allowed them to in increase their security because what we were able to do from a compliance perspective with the FIPS 140-2 Level 2 compliant tunnel, with what we are able to do from you know, the, the different contextual aware access into that, we are able to give them a much more secure access into these workloads and get access to the apps and desktops that they need to do their job. So how long ago did Lucas Metropolitan deploy uh, Citrus Cloud with Azure Government. Yeah, so they've they've been running this for a couple years now, really? right? And you know they're a great customer to work with, and we're really happy that they're a happy Azure Gov and Citrix customer. Thank you, Jose, for all that great information. Now, can you share with everybody what they can do if they want to get started with Citrix Cloud? So anyone can log on right now to citrix.cloud.com. They can start a demo account, and you can contact your uh, Citrix sales rep and your Microsoft sales rep for for further steps. Thank you, Jose, for all that great information. And thank you all of you out there for joining us today.